Hello guys, welcome to the next session of developing e-commerce application from scratch using Angular and Spring Boot. In the last session, we discussed on how we can create one a UI so that we can show all the cart details to the user. So let me just quickly show you what we did in the last session. So let me just log in with the user. And let me just click on login button. So over here, uh, we have added one new tab that is called as a cart. And whenever user clicks on this particular option, then user will be able to get all the products that are added in user's cart. So these are all the products that I have added in my cart. So the next thing that we want is we want to check out this particular cart. So what we are going to do is we are going to add one more button over here, which will be calling at a checkout so that whenever user will click on this particular button, then we will just like go to the checkout and we will just uh, do the billings and we will just fill all the address and then uh, I mean address details and then we will be able to place the orders so like to implement this checkout functionality on the cart again we require some changes on the back end side and again we require some changes on the front end side so what I'm going to do is I'm again just going to work on back end uh, part in this session and maybe in the next session we will see how we can work on the UI changes as well so uh, making the backend part is really very easy because we have previously itself handled multiple conditions. So what we have to just do is let me just go to the IntelliJ and let me just quickly explain some APIs that we have implemented in the uh, like in the past. So if I just go to the let's suppose product controller. So yes, in the product controller, we have created one API that is called as a get product details. So this product get product details API, what it does exactly is it returns us the product information. It returns us product details, right? Now over here, whatever information that we have, we require on the UI to place the order that all kind of information it returns us um, uh, as a result. So if I just show you, if I just go back to the Google Chrome and let's suppose if I'm clicking on the home button, let me just open the network tab and then over here let me just click on let's suppose first product and let's suppose if i just want to buy this particular product so right now what we are just doing is we are just trying to buy a single product so if you just see in the api we have one uh, like a parameter we have one path variable so over here it is asking like whether you want to buy a single product so if yes then we have to send value as a true and then we have to give a product ID as well. So it basically takes two parameters from the path. First one is is single product checkout, which is a Boolean value. We have to pass true and false. And then we have to pass a product ID as well. So let me just click on a buy now button. And in the network tab, you can observe what happens exactly. So whenever I'm clicking on the buy now button, then what is happening is we are just calling this get product details button and if I just show you yes so we are calling this get product details button and we are passing like is single product checkout then we are passing it as a true because yes we are going to buy a single product that is the reason I'm just passing it as a true and then we are also passing the product ID over here so in in my case the product ID is one that is the reason ID is getting passed as a one so this is the API that we have created and what it does is it basically returns us some information that we have required. So it returns us all the product details and uh, like whatever the product that we are going to check out, it returns us that product details and the information which is returned by this particular API. What we do is we use that information to show this particular uh, information in a table. So we use it for the billing purpose, right? So I hope like you got an, got some background around this particular API that we have implemented. Now we are going to use a same API to check out the cart as well. The only difference will be like whenever we um, like whenever we will uh, click on buy now button, then we will call this call this API with some different parameters values. And then whenever we will click on the checkout button on the cart then we will pass some different values and we will handle some conditions 
and it will be like um, we can manage it very easily so this is how we are going to use these get product details um, api so now let me just do one thing let me just go to the get product details uh, service function or method so let me just go to the implementation then over here if you just see on line number 45 we have added one condition like if each single product checkout if we are going to buy a single product then we have some code to execute and then we have else condition as well so in the if condition i'm going to add one more condition like i'm just going to add one more uh, condition inside my if what i'm going to do is i'm just going to check whether i'm trying to buy a single product alongside i'm just going to check like product id should not be null uh, or should not be zero let's say zero we can keep it as a zero so each product is single product checkout should be true and product id should not be zero if both are the conditions are matching then it means that we are going to buy a single product and then we will execute our existing functionality else if the single product checkout is false and product id is equals to zero then we are going to write some code over here so over here what kind of code we are going to write we are going to write a code which will return us like which will which will help us to check out entire cart right so in this way we are going to write a code so again it is uh, like writing the code is really very easy because uh, we have like most of the like, most of the information that we want we already have uh, different apis for that so what i am going to do is currently first of all i just need my username right because i just want to fetch my cart details so i just want the username so what i am going to do is i am just going to use uh, jwt filter jwt request filter dot current user so jwt request filter dot current user basically um, like it is current user is basically a variable which basically holds the like the name of the user who is currently logged in so this is how we are going to we 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 are assigning the value to the current user so what i am going to do is i am just going to use jwt request filter dot um, current user and let me just store it into let's suppose one string variable something like this the next thing that we want is we have the username but we want to fetch all the user details right because as of now we have only username but i just want to fetch all the user details from my database so what i just need is i just need user dao so let me just use private user dao something like this and let me just try to auto wire it something like this the next thing that we can just do is we can just use user uh, dao dot find by id and let me just pass my username which is my primary key and it will return me the object of user it will return me the user details so let me save it into the um user itself so let me just import a class and let me just make it as a com dot youtube dot e commerce entity something like this so again it is giving me the error because find by id basically returns an optional so we just have to use dot get as well at the end the next thing that we want is now we have all the user details now the next thing that i want is i want to fetch my cart details right so if i just show you like cart dao we have created previously so inside a cart dao we have previously created one uh, method that is called as a find by user method so what it does is it basically takes one user as a parameter and it returns all the uh, like all the cart items it returns a list of all the cart items which are there in this particular users bucket so this is uh, this this is the method that we are again going to use so what i just need is i just need to auto wire my cart dao so let me just use cart dao something like this let me just try to auto wire it and then lastly we just have to use uh, cart dao dot find by user and let me just pass my user as a parameter now it is going to return us list of cart so let me just store it into the list of cart something like this 
and let me just use the name as a cards something like this now over here we have all the cart items but if you just see we have the return type of the product so now over here we have some type mismatch so we have cart items and uh, but at the end we just want to return all the product uh, like all the uh, product information so if i just show you the cart entity like what we have so inside cart entity we have the cart id and alongside we have the product itself so this is the information that we want to fetch from this particular list and whatever information we will fetch that is like that product information only we have to return as a like uh, from this particular method so again we can just use a stream api to do this what i will just do is i'll just make it as a cards dot let's suppose uh, dot stream then over here we have to use a map and let's suppose we can give any name as a variable so i'll just give it as a x so x dot get product so what we will just do is from the cart we will just fetch only product information and lastly we will collect it as a list so let me just make it as a collectors dot to list something like this and lastly whatever list we will prepare let me just return it as it is so lastly what i what we are just going to do is we are just going to fetch all the product details lastly we will collect it as a list and whatever list we will prepare we are just going to return it as it is something like this now we don't require this um, return new array list like uh, we don't require this particular line so let me just remove it and now let me just save these changes so yes i think we are done with the changes now we can just try to test it out so now let me just restart my application let's see what happens exactly and we will just basically uh, try to you know use these two values like these two um, cases so we will just try to we will just try to hit these two cases so we will first of all try to buy a single product and then we will just try to check out the entire card so let me just go to the postman and over here let me just use http a local host and then let me just make it as a let's suppose let me just copy get product details something like this and then we require the path variable path variables so first path variable should be the boolean so as of now let me just make it as a true let's suppose if we are going to buy a single product and then we require a product id as well and let me just give product id as a one so i know like product id one basically exists in my system that is the reason i'm just going to um, like i'm just going to use it as a one now let me just do one thing let me just try to send it out let's see what happens exactly so over here it is giving me right now it is giving me as unauthorized because uh, this particular api requires the token it requires a valid token so let me first of all click on authenticate and let me just copy this particular jwt token and then let me just come back to my api let me just go to the headers let me just pass one header that is called as a authorization and let me just pass the value like bearer so b e a r e r then let me just give a space and let me paste the jwt token that we just copied now let me click on send button now if you just see we are able to get one uh, product so we are able to get only single product and uh, like product id is equals to one and we are getting some other information as well like discounted price actual price and some like image related information so whatever information we require we are able to get it uh, whenever we are trying to like check out the single product now let's try to make it as a false so let's try to make it as a false and in this case what i will just do is i'll just make it as a like product id i'll just make it as a zero now over here what i'm expecting is i'm just expecting like it should return me all the information like all the product informations um like whichever i have added in my card so let me just click on send button so yes we got some response so yes we are we have received like multiple products as a response like you can just see over here so we have multiple products we have received multiple products as a response 
and these are all the products basically that I have added in my cart. So yes, it is giving me the expected results. So yes, it is working as expected. In the next session, I'll just show you how we can implement this, uh, how we can integrate this particular API uh, in our Angular side and we will just try to finish it off. Like we will just try to add one checkout button over, over here. And whenever we will click on that particular button, then we will just call the API, this particular, particular API that we have just created. And then we will just try to do some further uh, things as well. So I hope you got an idea around this, like how we can add some changes to check out the entire card. And I hope you enjoyed this particular session. I'll see you in the next session.